good afternoon. Uh, I just uh, had a brief chat with uh, Bonganis Becker, a, a producer of TV shows. Uh, one of them is Family Secrets. And he was talking about uh, the impossibility of a Rolls Royce burning after an accident. He said a Rolls Royce was built to avoid burning. And uh, I don't know what is true, what is not. I spoke to Mr. Chikanza to cover the circumstances that would lead to a Rolls Royce uh, losing control. So that's, uh, that was the case with uh, Mr. Bongani, who says no, he has never had of an accident involving a Rolls Royce and uh, burning being part of that accident. What is your own take? I searched and couldn't find any example of an accident of this nature taking place and then a Rolls Royce burning. And uh, Bongani was saying, a Tata, yes, a Taz, yes, a small carnival, but not a Rolls Royce. Who knows the truth in this? These are the questions that are coming up, and uh, the questions come from a suspicious mind that believes that <clears throat> nothing can happen for no reason. There has to be something behind it. Do you think this accident was no accident or genuinely it was an accident? What is your take? When Simba asked me, I had no answer. All I said, if somebody's died, that's uh, the end of it. The moment I get into a superstitious mode, then obviously something comes. So what does that mean then, Mr. Maweri? I don't know what it means. But there are people who think there's more to the story than just an accident. There are people who think uh, this uh, uh, is something that <clears throat> has to be investigated. Impact can cause it to burn. I don't know, Trish, but uh, there are people who are persuasive, who know the car better than I do. It was an accident. How things ended up burning, it's for experts. I don't know, and the doors too. I don't know what uh, are the exact circumstances but there are people who know a phantom and uh, they are saying, no, it's unusual. <clears throat> it led me to think, and I'm no wiser than I was before the questions came up, but all I can say is uh, the people who know the car and uh, who can vouch for it and they are saying no uh, it's very difficult to uh, convince a Rolls Royce even after impact to end up burning Vagavriwa Tangi could dreams petrol leaked then fire <coughs> I don't know the head that seems to know something but uh, I don't have the facts. So all I wanted to do is just to share with you so that you can then apply your mind and uh, see whether what is being said makes sense. Does it make any sense? Is the same engine for plane? Yes. <clears throat> and. Uh, what uh, what do you think
Is it good to be superstitious? Is it good to be speculative? Is it good after someone's loss of life for us to dig deeper into an accident? Chunichese kutichitike or kusaitika panish konsero. That's what superstition does. All of many people are very superstitious, including me. Death cannot happen on its own. Somebody has to cause it. I think it was just about time. You rest when your day arrives. You can't run away or avoid death. You can't cheat death. It's not possible to cheat death. Both doors would not be open. That's what they are saying. <clears throat> Life does not make sense and we can never know and never come next to the truth. Uh, it's not good to assume, but uh, assume you don't assume. What then follows? Human beings and assumptions, uh, superstition, they are friends. The human mind lives in the knowledge of death, yet it's difficult to accept death as inevitable and sometimes predictable. What is the meaning of superstition? <clears throat> superstition, I think you can find it in this day of uh, the internet and uh, a superstition is what it is. Why not call Rose for, uh, uh, for clarity? Yeah, you got a point. I think people are already calling. There's a conversation around it. Every death, if it's of a human being, it creates its own conversations. If it's an animal, we eat it. But if it's a human being, there has to be a story behind the story. There are people giving up valuable time to discover that which happened in any event without their knowledge and consent. And uh, some will call no doubt and the story is developing and we will hear different versions of it. And obviously if you are the maker of Rolls Royce, you wouldn't be excited to hear what is being said of the car you made proudly to protect and promote life, good life, happiness. So there is a lot of talk, bad marketing, some would say good marketing. What happened on that fateful day? I don't know. I wasn't there. And therefore, the only thing I can do is imagine the unimaginable. But at the end of the day, life was lost. Like all of us, we will lose life one day. And when we get buried, there will be talk, there will be discussion. Why now, not tomorrow? Why did this happen? And why could life be not have been different? They can claim like what Paul Oka did with Porsche. Yes. So this is what you have, human beings, speculation, and uh, possibly superstition that uh, is very difficult for anyone <clears throat> to say they don't know. What's your take? Initially, I said death is death. It has no formula. It has no signs. It has no pathway. It's just what it is. When I die, I hope people will also talk and try to find meaning why life must end and why life must end the way it does. 
But when you are born, death is certain. You can't cheat it. There are far people in history who have been more important than I, but still they couldn't cheat death. So all of us live in the shadow of it. We are Africans. We are bound to have superstitious minds. Indeed, not just civilization permits us to assume, presume, even imagine reality. And when we do so, it becomes so easy to interpose yourself in events that fall outside your knowledge, outside your control, because that's what life allows us to do. It allows us to imagine, to dream without limits. Death is death, but we want now if it is, was an accident or someone did kill them. I don't know, <clears throat> but uh, the facts and circumstances overtaking two cars I had, underestimating on an oncoming vehicle and uh, then getting into an accident. And uh, I think uh, the circumstances are there, the facts are there, and uh, who am I to dispute what is now history? Had he paid you back the 500,000 he was owing you? Nope, he never paid. And I think uh, everybody who spoke to me, who had spoken to him, everybody who spoke to him, he always said he was going to pay. And he was going to pay in due cost. But I, I think he died uh, trying to find his way to me uh, to pay back. His issue was that if he had paid what was due, the amount was going to be higher than what he thought I was worth. He thought that uh, if you give me $1,000 today and you should only charge interest on it. And this is what uh, uh, the human mind thinks. It's very easy to take someone's money and assume that uh, you must charge interest because uh, we can keep the return. Like a bank gives you a mortgage, you live in the house for 25 years, and uh, it becomes your house. All you need is to pay the bank what is due to the bank. So there is an aspect of it. But uh, here we are not talking about that. We are just talking about this accident. What are the facts known to us? And uh, what is our imagination? One day Zim will look nice like this. I hope so. Funny. It doesn't happen accidentally. Uh, he should have paid Agaporonga uh, Papo, Agafanish credit. Yes, sir. but when you are alive, you never think you are going to die. I don't think it's possible for him to have thought that he was going to die so early. But the fact that he died. Is, is unfortunate, but that's what life is. What would be life li like if there was no death in it? When you are born, you said you are working on your dash. You are born today and tomorrow. Uh, uh, that's what happens. You die, but in between is life. It's your life. It's my life the stories we tell, and we will continue to tell the story. And the story is something that we need to tell so that others may learn. There are lessons to be drawn. Here you have somebody 
starts with nothing, becomes a multimillionaire, and he decides uh, who he should pay back to and what he should pay. But when you are looking for help, you, you offer what you need to get the help. Once you get it, something always happens. Some people would, uh, would look at it differently. So <clears throat> here we are. Rolls Royce may not admit a liability. I don't think uh, they would uh, um, change their brand contaminated they will always say something so it's premature for us to expect Rolls Royce to say anything without a thorough investigation there has to be some investigation when was the last time you remind you reminded him he was owing no he called me after the police station I think it was maybe 18 months ago, and uh, I said, genius, if you believe I'm a bank, keep the money, keep the interest, because uh, when you approached me, you never approached me as a banker. And I have no way of, uh, of assessing credit. But all I did was look at you and see where you wanted to get to. All I could do is give him a bridge. And the rest was his. And I said, no, let's share the profit in it, but you can move forward with whatever. It's not about money. Money doesn't multiply itself. Money requires somebody else to make it turn into something else. Money doesn't take into, turn into money on its own. Money requires a human personality to be able to be converted into materials, whether it's gas, whether it's diesel, whatever it is, it requires a person to do that. So, when, uh, when Genius came to me, I didn't look at the credit, I didn't look at the business plan. Or he told me he converts gas into cash, but the cash is collected in Zimbabwe, the gas is transported to Zimbabwe. Once it arrives, it is then broken down into small pieces, 5 kg, 9 kg, 12 kg, 20 kg, as the case may be. Then you break that into small bits and people pay for it. You collect the money. You bring it back to buy new gas. But in the, co in the collection, there's profit. And people pay for the gas. They don't pay for genius to be rich. So it was a question of turnover. So every week, a person can go and come back to South Africa to pick up a new load. And if there's a delay in getting paid or there's theft, it means the cycle is extended. So if you give somebody money, that somebody may turn it into gas, then from gas into cash, from cash into gas, and this is what you call business. You are providing a service. So the gas may not be yours, but you have paid for it. And when you collect, the only difference is when you collected the gas, the cash, he converted gas, paid for by me. Once he collected there, he said, Mr. Mawere doesn't need the cash. So the best way we can do it, I don't need to give him the cash. I tell him stories, and it's up to him to figure out. He's not in Zimbabwe, so what's going on? And uh, it is uh, what we celebrate. And uh, uh, there are some people you help or then turn the cash into something else. Never turns into some into wealth. So we learn a, a lot. 
about how cash can be converted into wealth. And uh, this is uh, what it is. So thank you very much uh, for being part of this uh, conversation about just imagining reality. And uh, it's not all of us. Uh, <clears throat> it's not all of us who can be superstitious, who can present fact into something else. And uh, we are here just to confirm that uh, a Rolls Royce can burn. And a Rolls Royce has no immunity to burning. So that's all we can talk about. But life is no more. And you can't bring back life. This is what it is. So let's all, let all of us deal with what we know. <clears throat> so thank you very much for being part of this. That's uh, my update. If uh, Simba Shikanza asks me again, I'll know what to do. And uh, <clears throat> I was just talking about something else and some people Baba Wapinda into the conversation. As uh, the case may be, I was talking about uh, Anne Marie here with uh, Mr. Singh, who owns the Royal India uh, restaurant, and uh, we're just doing a pilot here. Uh, uh, and that pilot. Uh, is to make it uh, easier to make payments. And uh, why didn't you campaign to be our president? <clears throat> Any person who wants to be a president, I salute him. Any person who wants to be himself, I salute him. Being president is the most abused profession. And let's build on it and let's work to make sure that you become the president you are waiting for. You don't need to be a president to be somebody. And you don't need to be what others think you must become for them to be who they must be. There is life for everybody and uh, let's keep talking. 